Okay, hey, it's David, the RV Shepherd. Check it out, new hat. Huh? You like it? Submarine service. Up on top of the roof of the RV, post Hurricane Ian. Again, we're on the East Coast. It wasn't too bad, just a lot of wind. You might have seen my tape jobs here. I did where I've got some small leaks, very, very small. Tape, uh, I figured out before the storm, it was not gonna hold. So I put these bricks on it and look at it, it stayed real quick and, and it didn't leak a bit. So maybe keeping some tarp on hand might not be a bad idea if you're not sure, you know, if you got issues that you know are there. But today we're gonna replace this skylight and uh, I'll show you why here in just a second. So, hope the air conditioner isn't too loud, but <clears throat> the reason that we are replacing the skylight is one, this skylight was not originally black. The previous owner painted it, and when they painted it, see, I don't know if you can see that, caused over time little fractures. Now, I came back several months ago and added sealant here because I thought maybe the leak was around the perimeter but it wasn't the leak is coming from like again i don't know if you can see that right here where my finger is there's a little fracture see and so water's been working its way in there now i've already taken on the skylight there's two there's the top dome and then inside there's a bottom dome uh i've already taken that out so when we get this off of here we're gonna be able to see straight into the shower you can see too it looks like the previous owner did some kind of patch job because this this was already failing so this tape or whatever is here i don't know what that is but uh anyway so we're gonna just take the skylight off and see what we can find it looks like it may be an actually like an aluminum tape bonding type stuff but there's screws so anyway we've got to get a lot of this stuff off the perimeter get up under here and start taking these screws out and that's what's going on allow us to remove the skylight let's just uh get on oh i guess i can show you some of the tools of the trade uh we got a bunch of stuff here some gloves ryobi cock gun i love this thing we have a whole bunch of tubes of dicor self-leveling sealant that's what's uh that's what's right here that's what all this stuff is here and then this in here is this kind of aluminum. So we got a whole bunch of those. We've got some ProFlex, which is a clear adhesive. Uh, Dicor does make a clear. I just, I don't know why. I just like, I like the ProFlex better. Two different cleaners for after we get everything off. One is a uh, Acrosol. Um, this stuff is great for removing, it says, silicone, undercoating, tar, grease, adhesives. So this is gonna be to remove uh, what I think will be some adhesive material underneath this uh, flange. And then good old fashioned sprayway glass cleaner, specifically this ammonia free. Various uh, array <laughs> of uh, bolts and screws, cause I'm not 100% sure what's gonna come out of here. This is what I think is gonna work. These number eight, the top is pretty broad. So these are number eight. My only concern is them being too small. I do like that they're self-tapping. So that's gonna help them go through. But if these are too small, too thin, then we will probably go with either a number 10. They don't have the flathead self-tapping. So a number 10, like a nut driver top self-tapping. If that's too small, <laughs> then we'll go with a number 12. These happen to be roofing ones with a little gasket. I'll, I'd probably take that gasket off or maybe I'll leave it on. I don't know. It's all gonna get covered up with sealant anyway. We also got the old heat gun. I uh, don't think I'll need it, but heat does really well to loosen up sealant sometimes to help you get under it. Go. Something you might want is bug spray. Uh, this stuff is really, really good. You know, like a screwdriver. I've seen some people 
use a dull bladed uh, multi-tool to kind of kind of help you get underneath the flange and some other stuff. We'll see. Don't know if I'll need that, but I brought it. Better to bring too much than not enough. Drills, drill bits in case, you know, in case you need them. I hope all that makes sense. <laughs> oh, the other thing you need is a new skylight if you haven't done that. I'll put a link below. Uh, I can't remember where we got ours from. Skylights are us. Skylight Express. Lightsinthesky.com. I don't remember, but <laughs> I'll put a link in the description. And I'll put a link for for all these tools, all these products too. Most of them you can get on Amazon, so there'll be Amazon links. Several months ago when we uh, resealed this, so it's looking super good still. To hit the like and subscribe. Helps me and helps people find out how they too can do a DIY project like replacing your skylight. Very DIY-able. You can do this. Now, fortunately, I might be sitting on my rear most of the time, but knee pads, when, once you've been up on a little while for on your knees, if you've ever done decking or any kind of work like that, uh, you'll know uh, knee pads are, are a necessity. Bug spray is our friend. Bugs are not, especially mosquitoes. Oh. So the edge of this flange, I'm gonna start right here, looks to be here, because this is also the, I already, already kind of sort of start here. This looks to be the edge of this flange. Let's see if I can get to a screw. Let's see what kind of screws we're dealing with here. Oh, this stuff is black underneath. That's where gloves come in. Maybe even rubber gloves. Maybe not. Oh, I hope those aren't hex. <laughs> Look at that. That mosquito tried to bite me right on the one spot that I don't have. <laughs> <clears throat> one spot I don't have bug repellent. Oh. This... Oh, I hope not. This, my friends, may be a rivet. Which I'm like, why? <laughs> and my understanding is that rivets are stronger. So, what is the smallest drill bit <laughs> that will take care of a rivet? Let's see what we got here. Yep, definitely a rivet. Flat top, uh, metal body, and uh, see those ripples in it? So a ball goes through there and expands this bottom part out to hold it. So the only way to get these out is to drill down through the center. So that's gonna be a little bit of a pain. This screw here is a, a V head. I hope you can see that. The problem with a, with a V head is that as this screw goes down into the plastic, it's a V shape. And as that V goes down into the plastic, it's gonna try to push the plastic apart as pressure's applied. Uh, and that could, that could crack the flange here. I'll be interested to see what the bottom of this flange looks like when we get all under there. So really just kind of, there we go. See that went all the way through. Now the stuff is sticky. So just cause you push through once, doesn't mean it's not gonna stick again the next time it, it lays down. Yeah, 
Yeah, this thing was brittle. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it should not, it should not do that. I can see the top of the shower. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Safety first, never last. It's amazing the skylight was still here at all. I know. I, know I mean, like, it should not <laughs> even come close to being that brittle. Okay, we're gonna use some of this stuff, Acrosolve, to get as much of the stickiness off of this surface as we can, so that we can do a test fit of the skylight. And if you use this stuff, use it in a well, well, very well ventilated area because it is very strong. So now what we're going to do is unwrap this bad boy and do a, uh, do a test fit, see how well it fits. So first thing is, does it... One, does it fit? <laughs> and does it fit inside my little perimeter thing? So the answer to that is it does fit. I'm gonna need to, cleaning is probably one of the more important things that you'll do on this job. And then we're just gonna outline. This end, where some of these are really, really big, what I can do is put them between uh, so I'm screwing into new uh, new surface area. Right, put that back over there. Try to keep it clean. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it gives me a good idea of exactly where I'm going to have to trim um, so that that bad boy can fit on there and be flush and flat. We're going to use our handy dandy multi-tool again. We did the test fit, we did the cut, we did some more cleaning. Again, we're gonna do uh, another round of regular cleaning here in a minute. But let's do another test fit. There you go, the whole thing sits nicely on that flatter. Look at all this sealing I preserved. <laughs> now some people say take it all off, but I'm gonna be able to clean this and actually lap on top of that and uh, that's gonna give me a really, really good seal. I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna mark where I want my screw holes to be, and then I'm going to uh, drill the holes. Then I'll do a final clean uh, with the glass cleaner, 
uh, and then we'll then we'll put the butyl down <laughs> and then we'll set this thing down and start start screwing it in so right now it's just a matter of can I get it back up <laughs> of deciding where these some of these holes are gonna be I don't need to prill drill, prill drill, pill drill, p, drill. P, I don't need to pre-drill <laughs> uh, the fiberglass part. Just this. So I'm going to pre-drill the holes. Then I'm going to clean and prep, and we'll start fastening this thing down. So let's let's get on it. Don't don't pre-drill on top of your thing. <laughs> Do it off off to the side somewhere. Also, don't put your hand underneath where your drill belt's gonna. It's pretty much a spray. I think I'm gonna have to go over the top with the solvent one more time though, because I'm still seeing some trace amounts of butyl. Try the rag this time because it's just going to be kind of a surface, a surface wipe up. Let's see how it does. So it is beautiful time. We get to use our handy dandy. So again, we're using our sky and window butyl sealant. One row that's definitely gonna go over each of these old holes, because I want them to be filled up. So you can see this butyl coming up see through that hole that means that that means it's in there <laughs> all the way down the road see each one of these holes got some that's some plastic from the uh, from the drilling but oh look at this see this one doesn't have any we'll see. oh there it is so it's in there and this is going to press down more this is that project that said on my short why do today which you can put off till tomorrow <laughs> And I should not have put it off, but I did. Get rid of that thing. Again, we're using these number eight pan head type screws. They're not called pan head, but they're big and flat. I think this one was my test hole. Just no easy way to deal with butyl. Or, oh no! Oh no! Maybe you know an easy way. If you do, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> uh, cure up a little bit. Then we'll come back and do some cleaning of this. And then we'll put some lap sealant dicor over it and we'll be good to go so we're back at the skylight project uh, and we're really really close to done all that's really left to do is take the protective tape covering off clean the perimeter 
and then put down a whole bunch of, of sealant. So we're just getting this tape off here. This is just a masking tape. And I want to peel it off so that so it doesn't get stuck under any of the sealant. There, that'll do. Clean is, is not quite as arduous as last time. And we're just gonna use the uh, Sprayway glass cleaner ammonia free. And we're gonna spray and wipe, spray and wipe two or three times and, and that'll be it. And then we'll put the sealant down. It'll be looking good. Now don't expect this to get pretty pearly white. Everything that I think my new sealant is gonna to touch and wanna to grab a hold of, I wanna make sure it's clean, as clean as possible. We're using a Dicor self-leveling sealant. So it is going to, it's gonna spread out a little bit on its own when it uh, sets up. So we're gonna to wanna to cover every one of these screws for sure. That's where water can get in and then kinda of work our way out from there. Now, if you can't tell, I am using a lot of this stuff. <laughs> this stuff goes quick, but it is good. That's also why I keep many tubes. <laughs> many, many tubes. Because when you use it, you're probably going to use it a lot. First thing I'm doing is making sure every screw, no kidding, got covered completely. Make sure that I got enough on there. This is definitely kind of one of those better too much than not enough scenarios. Tube number three. This stuff is not exactly the same as butyl. Like this stuff wipes off pretty good. Probably it's settling format, you know, it's not, it's not hardening up right away. It's not, it's also not eternally sticky. Now we just gotta let this sit. I mean, there is, there is literally nothing else to do but let this sit. I'm gonna, well, pull this tape off. And I'll just let you know, if you've ever done sealant like this before, you're all dreaming that it's gonna stay perfectly clean and white until it settles and, you know, hardens up a little bit, cures up. It's not. A piece of dirt, a bug, something's gonna get in it, and it's just, <laughs> that's just what happens. <sighs> but my friends, that, that is a complete skylight. Aren't you, <laughs> aren't you excited? I am. That thing's been leaking, like just a little bit, drip, drip, dripping. I uh, already put the inside lens, we call it, uh, back up on the, on the ceiling on the inside. And so this project is done. I would say, it probably took me, not including the, you know, it takes a little bit longer when you're talking to a camera. It probably took about three hours, maybe, maybe four, three to four, depending on how quick, how experienced you are, whatever, but how many problems you run into, <laughs> how nervous you are. As always, like I tell you every time, I mean, I'm up on top of an RV. You got to be careful. You got to be safe. Safety first, never last. Have a future, not a past. That's my motto. <laughs> What's the motto with you? Hey, I'm David Russell, the RV Shepherd. Being a good shepherd of my RV and hopefully sharing some information with you to help you be a good shepherd of your RV. I do certified RV inspections as well. So if you're looking to buy an RV and you're in the Florida area or coming up in uh, uh, early summer, late spring, early summer, we're going to be in Oklahoma City. So if you're around for that, you're in the Oklahoma City area, maybe even the uh, uh, you know nor uh, the entire Oklahoma City metroplex area, or or maybe a uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma area, and you need an RV inspection, uh, hit me up. Comment below, like, and subscribe. It's a big help. I thank you every, everyone for watching, for following along. Leave your comments, leave your questions, and I'll answer them as quick as I can. Take care, and God bless. Have a great day.